Hello, and welcome to Business Radio X and to our program, Justice at Work, where we empower employees through education and information about rights in the workplace and beyond. On today's show, we're going to discuss a few of the issues beyond the workplace, specifically those that result in serious injuries and wrongful death. These are very tough situations. We understand that, and we want you to know that you don't have to go it alone. There are attorneys who can help you. Here to talk with me a little bit about serious injury and wrongful death and the recourse that victims and their loved ones have is attorney Michael Walensky. Michael joined our team at Barrett and Farahani in January of this year, and he's leading our wrongful death and serious injury litigation team. I know that you've worked a lot on these kinds of cases for many years. Can you first just explain to our listeners in general what a serious injury case typically looks like and what makes a wrongful death case, just in sort of overview terms, and then we'll dive a little deeper. You hear about them a lot, mainly in the area of auto collisions, but serious injury wrongful death is really any time that an individual person is seriously injured or wrongful death would be killed due to the negligence of another individual or company. So it's the other person has, in a sense, breached their duty or broke a rule and caused harm to another. What kinds of cases typically fall into this category? What kinds of cases, for example, do you handle? So before the whole COVID situation here in Georgia, obviously the most common were serious auto collisions um, resulting in injury or death, tractor trailer collisions, motorcycle collisions. That was due to Georgia being one of the most populated areas. um, That was definitely one of the most common. The other areas that we see are wrongful deaths and they could occur in many different ways, not only from collisions, but hurt on a boat, hurt on ATVs through medical malpractice, through chiropractic malpractice, through shootings at a apartment complex that doesn't have proper security, or an elder person who's treated improperly at a nursing home. So we handle all of those. We've learned over 10 years of doing this that instead of focusing on one area, we've learned that all of these pieces are similar where we really need to prove, sometimes through an expert or not, really how the company or person breached their duty and why they're at fault and they're negligent. And then we always are very good at proving the damages and the harm cost. I know that recently, just as an aside, you mentioned nursing home cases. I know that recently we, Barrett and Farahani, helped pass a law in that area that assists employees who report wrongdoing, helps protect their job. Do you want to say a little bit about that? Yeah, in Georgia, in many parts, we still... The government has always said they're pro-business, and I've always said you can be pro-business while still protecting customers' employees as well. And um, sometimes we haven't had laws in place that protect everybody. And in this nursing home elderly situation, you would have situations where a person was being abused, and if somebody reported it, they would be fired. And that's not good because then somebody can't report. So these laws, there's been several laws that passed this year to help against nursing home abuse, elderly abuse, and here helping with the reporting of that abuse when it's going on. Yeah, that's interesting. I think that's a big step for Georgia to pass a law like that. I know when I first joined the firm, we tried to get some similar legislation passed that would protect mandatory reporters of child abuse, and we're still not there on that one, but I think it's a good step in the right direction. In terms of the area of practice for serious injury and wrongful death, You mentioned COVID earlier. What kinds of effects are you seeing as a result of COVID? How is that changing how your practice in that area is looking? And are you seeing case types or features of cases that you didn't see before as a result of COVID? One of the main things, like I said before, and as you can tell by the advertising in Georgia, we we had tons of cars on the road, tons of traffic, and due to that, tons of collisions. And one change that's happened over the past four months is we are not seeing as many the volume is down. However, the ones that we're getting are more severe. So for folks on the road, understand that people, one, aren't driving as much. So it may be like riding a bike. You always know how to do it. But practice, people are going at higher speeds and people may not be focusing as much due to just the times of being more stressful and getting places fast. So just be very careful. We're seeing much more severe injuries. Um, Just had a case come through where um, a lady went after the collision, had to go to the hospital, had to put a rod through seven of her vertebrae in her spine because her back was hurt so bad. Um, In terms of suing business owners, um, those cases are nearly impossible because COVID has a 14-day period where you can be without symptoms. And to be able to prove that a company 
you know, unless they literally were spraying COVID or, or just did something that's absurdly negligent, which would be even meeting the gross negligence standard, true malice, disregard for people's health, it, it's really very, very difficult to sue that. But, you know, we are seeing just different types of cases due to this. And um, in terms of nursing home, there are some cases though with COVID that it is clear and unconscionable that how much some of the nursing homes have ignored the new federal and state from our state of Georgia rules due to COVID. And those would be cases if they've totally ignored those that we could sue a nursing home. And do you think it's just that the roads are more open and people are just more careless because they think, hey, I don't have to deal with the traffic now. I can get somewhere in a hurry. That's interesting. You'd, you would think with, with less traffic, there would be also less accidents, but I guess it just means faster, faster drivers and more severe accidents. That's scary. Yeah, we are seeing less people on the roads. And here, especially in Georgia, people are not known for driving slow when they are able to. So we right. are seeing you have an open road like 400 or 285. You got five lanes. I mean, people are going fast and, you know, it only takes a split second of not paying attention for something really bad to go wrong. And in the area of cars in general, the two cases I see the most, especially with people under the age of 30 or especially kids under the age of 25, and which is probably happening more now because when you're in traffic, this isn't as concerning. But anytime you're going through an intersection and you see that somebody's waiting to turn left in front of you, so they're on your left, but they're waiting mm-hmm. to turn left, um, I tell people now, always assume that person's going to turn. Because especially under kids under 25 or, or a lot of people, you know, you think a car is not going as fast and you think you can make it and you go and all of a sudden you cause a T-bone collision. And we've seen a couple of those and that's just due to less cars on the road. People, you know, can't tell how fast cars are going. Right. And there's people paying attention and running through stop signs and red lights. I mean, people these days are just more stressed, a lot more going on and, you know, it's not good, but when you're in the car, you are handling a deadly weapon and we just have to make sure that people stay focused, but you have a lapse in judgment, lapse in focus and really bad things happen. So are you finding for the most part that the people causing these kinds of accidents have sufficient insurance policies to, to cover the people they're harming or what are you seeing there? I mean, I would say generally no. Here in Georgia is much better in Florida. In Florida, you don't you can get a zero dollar liability policy. That means you have an insurance policy But if somebody hits you, your insurance covers nothing. Here in Georgia, at least 15 years, probably should go more, but that's another conversation. But the minimum is 25,000. And if somebody is in a collision, and and I I mainly um, have focused on for the past six years, serious injury. At the beginning of a situation, you never know how bad somebody is. So we always take people from the beginning. But a lot of our cases are surgical cases. And anytime somebody has a surgery, that's going to be a six-figure case, easily over 100,000. If this the spine, it could be more than 400000 But clearly, if somebody has a $25,000 policy and a case is worth over 100000 that's not enough. Um, right. And that's why it's so important for everybody to have uninsured motorist coverage. That's something you get on own policy, which goes on top of the other person's policy if they're not insured enough. Which, again, is not required in Georgia, right? But you recommend it so that there's no personal liability or, or less personal liability in those cases? Yeah, so the only policy that's required in Georgia is a liability policy. In about eight, maybe 10 years ago, the Georgia legislature did require that an insurance adjuster must offer uninsured motorist coverage and that if somebody denies it, they must sign for it. Mm-hmm. However, people get tricked sometime by signing those documents online and they don't realize what they're giving up. And so in terms of personal liability and why that uninsured motorist is so important, you, you probably ever would go off somebody personally. And the reason is that if you get a judgment for a, a serious injury case, that's unsecured. So as soon as you get that judgment, that person can get a file for bankruptcy and get it wiped out 100%. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very important. And one other thing about, I'll ask people a lot when I first sign them up, um, what kind of insurance do you have? And they'll say, I have full coverage. Well, I want everybody to know full coverage means nothing. Full coverage is not a insurance policy. It's not some type of policy at all. It doesn't mean anything. So it's important when you go sign up for insurance to find out, are you getting liability coverage? Are you getting rental coverage? Are you getting damage coverage? Are you getting uninsured motorist coverage? Medical payments coverage. Those are five separate things. And 
full coverage in Georgia, all means is that they are giving you liability coverage of 25,000, none of the other areas. Right. And while we normally think about helping the person who is injured, I think this is good advice for everybody because even if it's the case that the injuries you've caused exceeds the insurance coverage that you have, it could keep you from having to file bankruptcy to get out from under that obligation, for example. So it's really kind of a, a win-win for everybody to have sufficient insurance in that area. Yeah. You really want to make sure you have the liability coverage that protects you if you hurt somebody but then uninsured motorist coverage. And there's two different types. There's traditional reduced, and then there's add-on excess. Those are two different ones, two different names for each one. The traditional, say you got $50,000 in uninsured motorists and somebody hit you and they had 25,000. You would get to get their 25,000 and you could use 25,000 of yours because it's reduced, meaning your 50,000 subtracted by 25. But if you have right. excess or add-on, yours gets added on. So you wouldn't have only 50 total, you would get their 25 and your 50. So you get the full 75 and it's not much more expensive to have that. The other one I would highly recommend is to have medical payments coverage. It's a no-fault coverage, meaning whoever's in your vehicle, literally you could have six random people not wearing seatbelts and one of them runs into a pole, but everybody in the car would get that towards their medical care. And you can get that for 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, up to $50,000. And so if you did it for $5,000, which would only cost you $5 more a month, every single person in the car would get $5,000 towards their medical care. And you care about that because if you're driving the car and you don't have that insurance, then again, it comes back to your own liability and then possibly not being able to fulfill that because somebody's judgment proof or having to file bankruptcy to get out from under it. Right, right. So let's talk for a minute about Lyft and Uber. I know that you know, with COVID afoot, people are somewhat hesitant or maybe somewhat hesitant to use these services for fear of being exposed. Are you seeing a lot of cases related to COVID in the Uber Lyft industry? No, we haven't gotten any calls about that actually. But once again, that may go back to, you know, how would you know if you caught it from the Uber driver? You know, if, if somebody's using an Uber or Lyft and not using a mask or going on a couple of the mask, it's hard to prove where and when you caught something. So we haven't gotten any of those calls yet. We have seen you know, over the past year, a rise in the amount of Uber and Lyft collision cases that, that we have seen, but that's probably just more to the use of Uber and Lyft now. I know you haven't seen those cases surface yet for Uber and Lyft drivers, but sh should those folks be thinking about changing their insurance coverage or should they be doing anything different to protect themselves in case this contact tracing can link it back to them? Yeah, for the COVID purposes, I don't think there's any policy special they should get. But one thing for any Uber or Lyft driver, your normal auto insurance will not cover it. So if you're driving for Uber or Lyft and you don't let them know, you're actually, your coverage would be voided and would not apply if you hurt somebody. So it's very important if you're driving for Uber or Lyft that you let your insurance company know or you get another policy specifically for that. Either way that you have a policy written that you're using your car for work purposes and that you're covered. The other interesting thing that we found through our litigation against Uber is that while you may be covered um, while somebody's in your car, there are some policies that we're able to wiggle out that during the time you don't have somebody in your car and you're going to pick somebody up while employed by Uber and Lyft, those middle periods, um, you need to have a policy that also has that in it. And actually some small insurance companies or new ones online have specific policies just for that period of time because some other policies have been able to wiggle out of that. One of the other things that I know you handle in your practice is chiropractic malpractice. And, you know, speaking of injuries and car wrecks and people who have issues from that, I know a lot of people visit chiropractors, but I also know that doesn't always go well. Can you talk about those kinds of cases and what you typically see in those cases and maybe give some advice to people about chiropractors, what you should, should avoid having them do if that's the case? Yeah. So this is an area where it's fun because I didn't like choose it. I didn't know I was ever going to do it. And um, I go to a chiropractor every month to three months. I have a herniated disc in my lower back and my upper back goes out and, and it's good for me. And it works for some people. Uh, some it doesn't. Um, I do think there's a benefit. If you're injured in a collision, I do think the better route from the beginning is seeing a medical doctor, not going to the chiropractor first, going to your primary care physician and possibly going to a physical therapist, which is usually the referral. I would not start straight out with a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of chiropractic practice, I came into this 
um, because he started adjusting me about 20 years ago. He never really adjusted my neck. And if he did it, he did it so soft in a way that it was very, very soft. You know, not like, and I've gone to many chiropractors throughout my life, different places, and, you know, people do really violent. I've been there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I asked him, why, why do you not do my neck like other people have? And he says, I'm actually one of the leading malpractice chiropractors in the nation. I did not know that. And um, it's one of the leading, in terms of the chiropractic malpractice areas, it is one of the leading cause deaths. So if you do the neck too quickly and too hard, it can rupture that artery. And the most famous case so far happened to be um, dealing with the Playboy model. And you can understand why it became most popular. She went to the chiropractor. She got adjusted. Um, after about four hours, two hours, four hours, she calls the chiropractor and she's starting to feel dizzy and weird and have a headache. And the chiropractor didn't do anything and she died. And, and so oh that's the biggest thing. Yeah, it's, it's very scary. If you allow a chiropractor to adjust your neck, definitely make sure that, you know, over the next couple of hours, you're not having a headache, dizziness. And if you do call a chiropractor and if it's getting worse, definitely call, you know, an emergency situation just to make sure. Um, the other thing to look out for with chiropractors when you go to one is, and some have and some haven't, but um, make sure they're taking a history. You know, every time you go in, they're asking you, have you been sick? Like a medical doctor would, it's required. And the reason it's required in taking that history is for that exact reason. If you're on a new medication, if you had an injury, if you're having high blood pressure, there are times they shouldn't do certain adjustments, especially your neck if you're in, in certain situations. Well, I was um, going to so, ask, I mean, would you recommend that people generally, I mean, I would want a chiropractor who said, hey, get an MRI first or get x-rays to be sure that there's nothing about your neck that I'm going to exacerbate. I mean, is that something you would recommend just in general? I, I did go to a chiropractor. They did have a little um, x-ray machine they would use to, you know, it was one, I guess it was you consider a cheap MRI, but at least gave them an idea. But the truth is once you hit about age 25 or 30, your, your spine has been worked a lot and, and you will have most likely a disc protrusion or herniation. It just matters how bad it is. And, and, and everybody right now that's listening could have 10 herniations, but the big thing doctors treat for the spine is the symptoms and, you know, whether you're in pain or not. And, and you could have one person with a, one minor protrusion who can't wake up and walk. And you'd have a person with 10 severe herniations who doesn't feel any pain. And so the doctors are there to treat the symptoms. So if you're having spine problems from a acute injury, meaning hit by a bat, hurt a motor vehicle collision, tackled playing football, that's something you should probably go to a medical doctor for because, right, you want to get an MRI and make sure we know what you're working on, especially you're not going to get an MRI from most chiropractors. Yeah, um, years, years ago, I went to a chiropractor. They didn't ask for an MRI, but they were happy to crack my neck like that, and it made me very, very <laughs> nervous. Uh, I really just, that was where I sort of drew the line. It was like no more of that ever. Just too scary. Yeah, and so you want to be with a chiropractor who – when you walk in, they've, they're they not just doing the, you know, the five things. I mean, you, after going to plenty of them, you know, they do, they do the leg left and right and they do the back and they do the neck and you're done. You're out of there. And they haven't even asked you a question. Those yeah. are the ones I would be concerned about. Um, people, when you walk in, they have a conversation with you, you know, even if you see them twice a week, at least asking you over the past two days, has anything changed? Right. But I, I think there is benefit for chiropractic treatments. Um, but just like any, business, any area that we do, there, there are good ones and bad ones. You just need to be careful, especially with the neck. So Michael, if you uh, were trying to talk with someone, if someone was asking for a personal injury attorney and you weren't you and you were outside the firm and you needed to tell them why you'd come to Michael Walensky, what would you say? What makes your practice different than all the other PI firms that we see out there and all the other serious injury, wrongful death attorneys that want our business? When I first started out, a while ago now, I, I asked some of the attorneys who I really respected and, and were handling really big complex cases and doing really well. And I asked them, how did you get started? How did you build such a great practice? And their response, all of them were the same. It was when you get a case, make sure it's a good one and treat those clients. I would say as your family, but some people don't like their family. So let's not say that, but treat them, you know, as, as kind and, and, and respectful and work hard and do a great job. And that's the way I've built my practice. And something I've always focused on and I continue to focus on is we do, as we get a full and full load of cases, we do limit our cases. We make sure we don't, we have too many. 
and we make sure they're the right cases and good cases. And that way we're able to focus on those cases and put the time into those cases to make sure, first of all, we're in great communication with the clients. They always have our cell phones, even me as the attorney. Uh, they're always able to get in touch with us. They're always informed what's going on. And also that gives us the time to be able to prove their case and get the best results possible. Um, none of our clients are just a number. They're you know, part of our business family and we make sure that they and their cases are handled to the best way possible. And that's really made a difference. Instead of taking everything, we really focus on doing the best for good cases and good people. Yeah, I know there's a lot of personal injury mills out there, I'll call them, that will just take any case off the street, regardless of the value of the case or whether the person really has a good chance to recover um, and resolve the case to their satisfaction. So I do think that's important so that people understand, you know, exactly what it is they stand to gain by hiring an attorney and it's just equally as important to to understand what you may not gain and that's I know one of the things we do at Barrett and Farahani is to just be straight with people level with people about their case and the facts in their case and what it may or may not mean for them and I think people appreciate that honesty you know rather than being told like yeah your case is great come on sign up that's that's not really what I think people want to be looking for in an attorney yeah, I mean, that's all true. And that's why I'm excited to join Barrett and Fair Honey, because the idea of how to run a firm and how to treat clients and how to work cases is so similar. So I'm very excited to be a part of Barrett and Fair Honey now. And, and what you're saying is also true is just um, being able to understand the case and how to succeed and make sure you have the cases to work on that the clients know are being cared for and will be worked well. That makes the biggest difference. Well, thank you for talking with me today, Michael. Hopefully this information helps people get a better understanding of when to reach out to an attorney for help with these very difficult issues. I want to remind everybody about the COVID resource information on our website at justiceatwork.com. I want to invite anyone who believes they need help with employment issues or the kinds of cases we discussed on today's show to call us or visit our website and schedule a complimentary 20-minute phone consultation with an attorney to talk about your case and the facts of your case. Thanks to everybody for listening and please tune into Business Radio X and Justice at Work again next month where we will continue to empower employees through education and information about your rights in the workplace and beyond.